So have it right. Up the Chelps, up the Minerals FC. Big up to every single one of you live and locked in. Hope everyone's doing well, winning in life. First and foremost, guys, I want you all to smash the piece of that like button. Make sure you smash it and you don't want that Birkin bag. You want the Minerals landing. So smash it for those reasons and those reasons alone. Also, we got the subscribe button. We are literally eight subscribers away from the 10K. Let's have it right. So let's get to 10K on this show right now. Big up to everyone. Anyone new in here, make sure you smash that subscribe button. We've also got the Minerals FC Ultras membership down below in the description, along with uh, the Rumble link. Um, and big up to everyone. Salute to all the Minerals FC Ultras in the chat. Respect to everyone. We've also got Eunice Talks Minerals and Gunny with Man Knows Minerals. Not football no more. It's Man Knows Minerals. Their links uh, to their channels are in the description. Uh, sorry, in the uh, in the title, guys. So big up to everyone. Make sure you get in the chat. And um, hopefully we're going to land some more minerals and have an overdose. But big up to Eunice. How you doing, my geezer? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Um, good to be on again. Thanks for having us. And um, big up to the chat. Shout out everyone that's uh, locked in. Um, yeah. It's going to be a, a, a shorter one than usual, but I think a lot of impact to come because this is going to be a good one. There's tons to talk about, so I'm looking forward to it. Goody, what are we saying, my geezer? I'm all good. Lucky to have all five fingers. I told you something else as well, yeah? They tried, how dare they? They tried to offer me red band-aids, plastic, um, plasters. They tried to offer me the red ones. I took them and I threw them on the floor and I said, don't you dare. I need blue ones, yeah? We don't do red. We do blue over here. Yeah, never, ever. Yeah, we're proper Chelsea over here. Do you know what I mean? So there you go. Got the blue hands going on over here. Big up everyone in the chat. Big up you, man, as well, man. Good to be back. Love that. Goonies moving like JT, proper Chelsea. Love that. Proper, man. <laughs> Absolutely love it, bruv. Yeah. JT, for everyone that don't know, the plug switches. He can't have them on with the red showing. He has to switch them off. So have it right. So uh, respect and shout out to our captain leader legend, bruv. Um, and to all the Minnows FC Ultras in the chat, make sure you get in the chat, make sure you like, subscribe, all that jazz. But guys, a lot has happened in a week since we've last been on. Um, I know everyone's been landing it on their own channels, and it's absolutely necessary. Um, but we've got on Sunday, we've got the Strasbourg Ultras <clears throat> protesting, full on protest. I've been told, shout out Steve G, uh, they are well organised. Well oiled machine, ready to land it, ready to go full on during the before the game, during the game, after the game. We've seen the banners on motorways already, we've seen um, their statements. They are not messing around, they are there with one objective and one mission only is to get Blue Co 22 Midco at a Chelsea football club and Clown Lakes under that. So all the Chelsea need to follow suit. They're actually shocked that the Chelsea are not following suit right now, that they haven't been proactive, that they haven't set up protests. And, and that has to happen. Like, there is no time to waste now. Irrespective, win, lose or draw, the wins makes it a little bit difficult because obviously we're, we're, we're having a few little decent results here and there. But the reality is the structure do, it doesn't, doesn't change. The model's not changing because of it. You know, we're still going to be in this situation. So we have to act accordingly, together, united, not divided. Because we're going to start with this. We have had the divide set within the fan base. We've got the Chelsea Supporters Trust that wrote a 1500 worded articulate, well-presented letter asking for answers, asking for clarity, Asking for Bowley and Igbali to respond. And in response, we get Chris Jurisic, Jurassic Park, the rat that he is, replying with just a, a political response of no no substance, just justifying what we do for support. It's, it's a load of waffle. He calls us customers. They all call us customers. In return, after that, because we had Sky Sports Globally, we've had um, Talk Sport. We've had then the sticker campaign. And then straight after that, we've had the backlash PR stunt, PR Happy Meals from Clown Lake themselves, sending the fan advisory board to respond to the Chelsea Supports Trust. 
without the owners just going directly to Sports Trust. That's all they have to do. So, guys, let's take your thoughts on it. We'll start with you, Eunice. Land it, bruv, for what it really is. So far, the way that it's going, there's two things, right? One, if they continue to hide away and not say anything, this is only going to get worse for them. Because even people that were fairly down the middle and impartial are starting to realise this can't go on. They need to come out and say something. Say something, you know? Don't ignore and don't hide. Secondly, because they're ignoring, because they're hiding, it's it's cowardly. It's cowardly. Simple as that. Um, we, we've seen what's happened the last couple of days with the whole injury stuff and whatnot. And that's raised concerns as to what's happening and how are things being run behind the scenes? What sort of medical team have we got in place? What sort of infrastructure is there? What's happening overall? Uh, so much and so many things that people are not getting clarity on. It's mudded waters, it's smoke screens, it's blurred lines, it's, it's no one's quite sure what the picture is saying. The more this goes on and the more they stay away and they don't address the situation, the worse it's going to get for them. So balls in their court, they've got to come out and start talking. Because if not, like I said, this is going to go south even more. And the people that they thought were not really going to be involved or not say anything or remain impartial, even they're going to be clocking on and going, nah, you've got to say something now because the state of the club, what the, the state of the club is at stake. So... Simple as that. Cowardly at the moment. Cowardly. And and I think before we get Gunny's take on it, I think that the the owners uh, are going to be cowardly towards the Strasbourg Ultras, who they don't really acknowledge yeah. because they're not as big as Chelsea. You know what I'm saying? No. Like Chelsea. They're the little main... wrong. Yeah. Exactly. So let's see how they react to that. Gunny, what's your take and 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 how do you feel about the whole situation? Because I I think it's disgusting. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I think it's I think it's ridiculous, and even just from a principle standpoint, because I'm a kind of person where you know someone has a problem with me, or I have a problem with somebody. It doesn't matter how many of you there are. I'd rather have the conversation face to face. I'm not trying to hide behind anything because that's what you're supposed to do as a man. Do you know what I mean? So the fact that they came with such a generic and flipping ridiculous response was a slap in the face. And I felt it was a bit of a, an insult to our intelligence. You know what I mean? Because they didn't really address anything. They didn't address anything that mattered. And it's like I said before in the other stream, all that really needed to be said was we will organize a meeting where we can answer your questions face to face. Because, you know, even that rat, um, Levy, Tottenham flipping owner, he even sits down and talks with the fans. And they yeah. want nothing. They've done nothing of, of any note in football, but he's still happy to sit down and talk with them. So what, what does that say about us? And you're very much right about the, the Strasbourg thing. I feel I feel bad for them. They are making a lot of noise and fair play to them. Definitely fair play to them. But they're not going to be overly concerned with them. So I think in terms of that, the pressure really lies with us Chelsea fans to make sure that, you know, we make them listen. You know, maybe it's, a, well, not even maybe, I think we need to go to the extent of what the Stra Strasbourg fans are actually doing or perhaps do even more, 100%. Yeah, and 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 to put to put note on Levy, the the the, the Spurs he wrong and yeah, who their club and their supporters have no standards, and he's got the audacity him bollocks and minerals fair play to him, sit down for them to go. What, what are you doing? Because we're not doing anything. We're not progressing. So Jim Ratcliffe sat down with their United supporters trust for four hours in front of camera, and relayed everything openly. We haven't had that at all. All we've had is. We want to win. I had a fan. All this nonsense. Um, sitting at conferences, talking about beachhead and streamlining, multi-clubs, and that increasing business value is more important than winning or losing on the pitch. That's what we've heard. And it's not been directly at us, but it's there, documented for everyone to see. So it's yeah. like, wakey, wakey, mate. You know what I'm saying? The stressful ultras, you don't take them lightly, bruv. They're a, they're a serious number, mate. I mean, they're a serious firm, bruv. Yeah, they got size, mate. Yeah, so um, uh, whether, whether the stats of the clubs, yes, we know. Different ball game altogether, different playing field. But in terms of what impact they're going to have, Clown Lake ain't got a clue how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be no PR that's going to be able to sway them off or shove them away. They will keep going and going and going. 
and it's not a good PR look. And that PR look rubs off onto Chelsea. And it will also make the Chelsea look weak if we don't act. Exactly. And and we have to act with them together, partnered. Yeah. Because yeah. we want the both both of us want the same outcome. We want them to either change your model. So bias experience. Get one elite director, get one elite gaffer, show your intent on, on the same level, you know, different level at Strasbourg, but to the one at Chelsea, change the structure, take a step back, understand the culture, heritage, what you're running, what club you're running, and, and do the right thing. Or if you don't, which is clearly you're not going to because you've ignored the Chelsea Sports Trust and you've sent the FAB to try and insult them, and you've got people like Simon Jordan and all these platforms going, oh, the supporters are the real clowns. Um, Chelsea supporters trust a disgrace for what they're doing. How can you moan at an own, owner spending one billion? It's not spend the billion, it's how you spent it. And it's where we're going. We're two years almost into their, their first two-year reign. And we are still sitting mid-table. We're showing no progression. It's like, it's unacceptable. The stand, These are not the stands of Chelsea. And they're at the same time, they're throwing anti PR Roman stance. And people like Simon Jordan are bringing politics, mud trying to mud Roman instead of talking purely about football, which is what this is about, and the sport, and just keeping it football. In football terms, Roman, no one can touch him. No one. That's why he did that. That's why he did that. Because that's his only angle to try okay. and have a dig at Roman. And Simon Jordan. Joe Knightley reincarnated. You're a puppet on strings. You're a brown envelope. We called you out for what it really is on here. And I called in on TalkSport. They wouldn't let me on. Let's have it right for the obvious reasons. But the bottom line is this, guys. The Strasbourg Ultras is going to have a massive impact. And I'm, I'm ready to drink in the damn minerals. And I can't wait. Now, I will say that they have been a couple months in advance in preparation. Because they've already made their voices clear a couple months ago, and it's been built up. We are yeah. behind in that sense, but I feel like we could be closer to them than we all think. Yeah, and it's a it's, it's based on on results. So the Burnley result, the Man United result, the City result. These are key games. No matter what you say, we should be steamrolling Burnley. We should be beating United with our record at, at the Bridge against United. They haven't won at the Bridge for I can't, a, a long time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but they're a, they're a stronger suited Man United than they were when we got battered by them at Old Trafford. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that can go, these records can just get blown away, you know, these, these home advantages in certain situations. And then we've got City at, at Wembley. So listen, the momentum's with the supporters and we need to keep fighting the PR because the PR... As we know about Roman, Eunice will tell you about the Mar Mar Marina Granovskaya, Bruce Buck situation. You've got all this from Simon Jordan coming into politics. It's, it's a disgrace, bruv. Because, Eunice, I want to ask you, because you do know a lot about this, right? They've got no right. They don't actually have to answer anything, Marina and, and Roman. I mean, Roman can't because he's sanctioned. But Marina... In reality, what's going to happen? You do you honestly believe something's going to happen with that? We're no longer. Yeah, this is, um, like the whole, the whole. There is, there is Marina stuff in the background um, in terms of what dealings were done in the past and whatnot. And I don't, I don't feel like that's that's to ignore. But they're not working at the club any longer. <laughs> so if they were working at Chelsea, different story. We'd have an entire different conversation because you're talking about a current Chelsea director that needs to answer some questions or needs to come straight and, and explain. These guys, her and Bruce Buck, if he was overseeing or, or, or was aware of anything dodgy that was happening in terms of certain deals or whatever, um, they're not at the club anymore. And this isn't a legal matter in terms of we're talking the law. Um, this is a case of they're not at the club they don't technically even need to pick up the phone if they don't want to. Um, so if they do end up making any sort of statement, it's because they've done it voluntarily, because they feel like they, they want to do that. 
It's as simple as that. So, yeah, could Chelsea still be punished? I think so, because pff, there's no one else to punish, is there? Or, <laughs> so, or, or, or is it a case that the owners who set this up, because they set this up to FFP, they snitched, right? They, yeah, they, okay. they self-reported. Yeah, They self-reported it. it there's, there's two sides to this. The one side is they've done that so that, listen, don't get punish me too harshly. All right, give me community service. All right, and I think Nottingham Forest did something similar, if I'm correct, right? Or a or, or club did something similar. Um, I can't remember which club. I think it's Forest. Forest right. got four points lately, didn't they? So yeah. maybe, maybe. So yeah. it, was, it was sort of like a light punishment because they spent a lot of money and they bought a lot of players. And then there's the other side to the story of Marina not having to say anything, knowing she doesn't have to say anything because there's actually nothing there that can be proven for us to be punished. This is the thing. These are these are questions technically we don't know the answers to. Um, what I will say, it, it, from a tactical standpoint, in the way that they're running the club and the way that things are heading and fan discontent, they could use this as a way to camouflage their mistakes and just make it look all like, okay, there's, there's a portion of what's going on that has to be blamed on before, and this is what we came into. They might go down that angle just to try and cover their skin a little bit. That's one of my concerns anyway. Um, but where Chelsea get punished if we do, how how much we get punished, what happens? Genuinely, I have no idea. Because today no broke idea. out, we're going to get a 10-point deduction. I don't know if you saw that today. Did right, no, so, I didn't. Right, that, well, that, that that's what they're, they're sort of trying to push out, all right? Whether that's a reliable source or not, they're all McDonald's bloody curry sauces and barbecue sauce getting <laughs> flying about. So we don't know how, how quality they are. Do you know what I mean? Um, but there's that there's that side that we're looking at points deductions. But the reality is people forget to talk about the fundamental facts. First thing is Roman left us 1.5 billion debt free when they bought the club. The second thing is when they came in the club, both Meatloaf and Siri Merchant playing sport and director, they spent in the first two windows 635 million. They then prolonged that made that about FFP because they were in breach of FFP, stripped our entire Champions League winning team, lowered the wage structure to then go into the next transfer window and take it up to a billion. 235 million of that has gone to Seagull Merchants. And now we're back again with FFP for the year after of 100 million uh, outstanding amount that we need to show profit for, right? This is all their own doing. So why is Roman getting brought into this? Because Roman, we didn't have these issues with Roman. So no, this is and why it, I squash the PR that they're coming at Roman with. Well, it came out yesterday, didn't it? That if the, if there was any debt that was showing up for Chelsea, he just pulled the check out and just write it off himself. Exactly. <laughs> because the fundamental priority was to what? Was win to win. Was win trophies. It wasn't monetary. Yeah, it wasn't monetary. It wasn't monetary. These guys are monetary. And that's the reality. Fully. fully. There's nothing, like, like we said, there's nothing wrong with acknowledging Roman, it depends on the intention of the owners when they walk in. Most owners, most, will come in and they obviously want to make money, but they don't want to fail. So they, they balance things out, right? And they try and look after the business as well as the football side, try and do things correctly. We have to acknowledge when Roman came in, FFP didn't exist. There wasn't a th it, it was it was almost like a toy project to him. If I'm not mistaken, his missus at the time in 03, when he did take over, was quoted as saying he bought himself a new toy. Because that's what it was. It was just a passion project. He wasn't coming in to make money. He was coming in to try and run a winning football club and try and gain power on the football front rather than make money, which we accomplished. Hence, Chelsea were the most successful English team in 20 years. That speaks volumes. Mission accomplished for him. But it wasn't about money. These lot have just flipped it 180. It's not even a case of trying to balance both sides. They've just flipped it complete 180 and just gone all monetary and trying to find profits wherever they can. And we're seeing the consequences of that. So that's one thing to bear in mind and why Roman was constantly, if there was any sort of financial problem that showed up, he'd be like, yeah, no worries. I'll write it off. Boom. Check out. And, sorted. And that, and that's a fact because... Everyone knows, and it's, it's it's well documented, the campaign against Chelsea was because we had Roman as our owner and because we were successful along with that. And we were the most hated. We still are. We still are for that whole period. Everyone hates Chelsea. Don't ever forget it. And all the media do. Um, 
Simon Jordan and all these in the pocket of the Clown Lakes, they love this whole thing of you've got to be patient, but then they'll speak as a pundit and say, don't be patient with gaffers, but be patient with owners because it's different context. I would say there is an element of that, yes, because an owner's not just going to walk out the door. But at the same time, you have to respect Roman left us champions of the world. Roman left us champions of Europe. Roman left you, us in champions of transition. Football. Yeah. And as soon as these guys come out, come in the equation and through the door, we're out of Champions League. We're not getting into Europe. We're losing all that revenue. So because we're losing all that revenue because of their mistakes, we're having to suffer on the field with what we're putting on the field and how we spend the money. Now, it's all their fault. They don't know what they're doing. Hence, yeah. they say the Chelsea supporters are clowns for making uh, stickers and all that. They're the clowns. They have been crowned the clowns of European football, football in its entirety. Because every owner, every supporter, players, they know. How are you running it like that? How are you getting away with doing it? And 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 that's not that's one way not how to run a football club. I'm definitely staying clear of that structure and that model. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. why are we being tarnished as supporters? The Chelsea, Chelsea Supporters Trust being being tarnished because we're there to defend our, our football club, keep our stands at a football club where they were left by Roman Abramovich. And it's a disgrace that the PR allows this whole lower the standards we need a few more transfer windows we need to balance the books uh we you know if we get an fa cup with european football it's okay but if we don't it's okay you know there's no pressure uh, it's only five-year plan it's a load of waffle mate honestly yeah no this is the pudding to suggest that this process is ever going to work anyway and they don't believe it themselves because they're not fulfilling that process by keeping potter in or whatever they're doing or keeping a potch in it's a budget Roman model, but go on, sorry. No, this is, this is the thing, right? When we're talking about the, the PR, they, they're continuing to go down this route. This is why I said earlier, they have to come out and talk, speak, stop this PR crap and stop plugging out all sorts of various people to come and do the dirty work and come and address the situation. I'd, on a side note, right, can I just say, Simon Jordan, um, li listen, he took Crystal Palace into administration. So I don't feel like he has any legs exactly. to stand on as an owner. Like, uh, it's as simple as that. He wants to talk about anything else, you're welcome to. But to try and talk about how an owner should run a club, <laughs> he might have done a couple of good things at the start of that Palace reign, but it didn't end well. So I feel like he's got no legs to stand on to even begin with. But the fact that there's these people coming out with a piece here and another piece here and this and this letter and the FAB and stop relaying... PR, relying on this PR machine to try and get them lot to do your dirty work. Come out and address the situation. Fulfill what the CST have asked, the largest Chelsea support or representative group that there is, right? And sit down to a face-to-face -face meeting and put things on the table. That way we can move somewhere. If that's not being done, they're just cowards and it just shows that they're not willing to budge or they're hiding away and they don't care. It's as simple as that at this point. That's it. That is it. And and uh, to to continue that, I want to show what this what these owners are doing. Roman did it to an extent, and we know that, but not to the extent of like we didn't really need any negativity because we, we we were like we were positive as a whole as a fan base. We were just talking about players and this and that, or results or corruption. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But let's bring this up. We're going to bring up George Benson right now. Play this quickly because it's a very short snippet. But this is exactly what I've been saying that they do that they use accounts, they pay accounts, and they want to force only a positive narrative. And by the way, I can come out and say this because I've been paid by Chelsea Football Club at times to work on certain projects. And I can tell you now, there is certain things that you just can't say about Chelsea, specifically painting the club in any kind of negative light. I did a video with the FA Cup final when we lost to Arsenal and none of the content was ever showed because we lost. So... Chelsea don't really like to be seen in a bad way. So anything that comes out of the fan advisory board, best believe, I'm sorry, but this is just a plain obvious truth. Whatever comes out of the fan advisory board is still going to be with the intentions of painting Chelsea Football Club in the best light possible 
even if we're losing on the pitch and even if the owners don't know what they're doing and they're alienating the fan base. That is the, that's the truth here. So respect to him for saying that he was talking about a video that he made under Roman in the FA Cup final. But what yeah. he's, he's relaying to that as when he was when he worked with a club, whether he wants to own up, whether he's worked with a club now under Clown Lake, that's a different. Discussion. No, I, I, I can I can come out and say he's not because he's he's been in Bali since Roman was at the club anyway. He's not been back in the UK. I think up until now, he's only just come back now. So all right, so <laughs> he's given an example, but he's also backed it with the FAB situation and how they're in the pocket to only speak for the mouthpieces of the owners. That was under Roman. Can we just say as well that was under Roman, and even then, like like many organisations, they'd want to try and keep things in a positive light. Can you imagine now? <laughs> imagine what it's actually like now. It's a hundred yeah. old. Roman's a different situation anyway. I look at that completely yeah. differently because Roman was the type of owner like if if Chelsea lost, he was pissed off like we were. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like he's 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 that's coming from the right place. Do you know what I mean? He's got that exactly. Chelsea ego. He wants to see us win. Do you know what I mean? Like my man sending messages to Ancelotti with question marks and now after we lose in games. That's a man that loves the club. That's asking, yo, what's going on here, man? We need we need that result. But these guys a completely different motive whatsoever. Absolutely yeah. different motive, man. We've got this flipping guy, bro. Todd Bowley, Bedadic Bali. They're business guys, bro. They're business guys. They're running this, bro. It gets on my nerves. Uh, it's, it's upsetting, man. Honestly, this is it. Like, whether you like it or not, all the platforms, there's a lot of platforms, and Twitter included, specifically. Twitter yeah. platforms that have been followed by the owners as well, that follow the owners, that can have direct, direct messages with each other, that can be put forward on the scripts and, and the, the, the preparations that are happening. They had a bunch of content for the Carabao Cup final if we won, a load of it, more than Liverpool had. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Love so it. It. Um, that just shows you the lengths of the PR that they're ready to go to because it, it's a PR driven machine. With the yeah. They probably spent more on PR than they have on our players, mate. You know 100%. what I'm saying? Hundred percent, and the PR's world class. See what happens when you pay. Oh, it's top tier, mate. Top tier did you round. see? Did you see before the Carabao Cup final? Did anyone see the uh, the promo for that game directly before kickoff? There was a package like to hype up the game, mate. That was Hollywood type shit. That was that was top tier, like next level. Oh yeah, of. bro. Doesn't it, it, Todd, doesn't Todd Bowley like does Todd Bowley like own part of oh, the? He owns or the Golden Globes, like, yeah. Yeah, or the Golden Globes or something right like that. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Who the hell is this guy, Todd Puffy Bowley or something, bro? Right. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It's, it, it, listen, this guy's meatloaf, yeah, reincarnated. Except he ain't got no number one hits, bro. You know what I'm saying? He he can't get near number one spot, bro. He can't get out of twelve spot, bro, in the charts. Um, listen. This brings me on to Meatloaf Bowley and the PR stunt that was brought out yesterday about him in 2027. He's going to step down as chairman and everyone's going, oh, look what Johnny's done. Look what these guys have done. They're forcing Bowley to step down and get out. Yo, Waffle Merchants, bro. He ain't stepping down. That's all pre-planned. He has to be there every five years as chairman and then they pass it over like they pass old slosh pot wet around on a They'll train. Take the brown envelopes, fam. Take the brown envelopes and then hand it a Siri merchant or whoever's going to be in place on Clown Lake. It might be Jurassic. Who knows? But someone's going to take that position and they're going to milk in the 20 million a year. And people don't even actually state the facts that he's earning 20 million a year. Like They don't even yeah. bring that up, what he's earning. And that shocks that, me. No. <laughs> that that Daily Mail article that came out which which ended up actually referencing matt law when he mentioned it a few days ago because we spoke about this and then yesterday all of a sudden it was it was like news and fair play to everyone that came out and said no we know right <laughs> we heard we heard this a few days ago now it comes but, from united stand eunice and that mark goldbridge that printed cesar fraud bro that's who brought out on his this is football and mike keegan mike keegan the daily mail yeah or the time yeah daily mail i think um but it went on to say that Bowley's going to step down in 2027. But this was agreed when they took over at the club in an internal agreement between him and Clear Lake. So now in 2027, it's going to be a Clear Lake person or Clear Lake appointed individual. It's going to be Egg Bali. 
going to be in Bali. Yeah. We just clarify that. It's in yeah. Bali. That's already been agreed. <laughs> it's already done. So um, now, unless if he decides to try and put a puppet in there to try and make it look like something's happened, but it's like Bali. It's clear like. So this isn't news. This is, again, this is what I'm saying. It's just, it, it's constant PR. Like, stop the PR and address the problems. Address the situation and be honest with the fan base. Please, for the love of God, be honest. It's They're buying time, Eunice. That's all they want to do is buy time. They're buy time merchants. It's horrible. It's horrible. You know, get out of our club, man. You know what I'm saying? Either change it or get out. Yeah. Because your intentions aren't right. And this PA, PR ain't washing with me or anyone, bruv, that's got any sense. Like I said, that's it's getting worse for them. Strap up, you clown lakes. Yeah. You don't like the stickers. They say, oh, the stickers. Oh, it's embarrassing. It's this and that. Oh, no. How can you do that? How can you depict them as clowns? Because they are clowns. They are. And there's nothing you can do about it. They're crying more about stickers than they are about the Chelsea Sports Trust. Because yeah. they dismissed the Chelsea Sports Trust. Oh, we'll send the FAB on you lot. That's no problem. We dealt with that. Next one. What's the next one we've got to deal with? We've got to handle the stickers. How are we going to handle the stickers? They're making us look like clowns. That's insulting to a billionaire, bruv. What are we yep. doing here? Yep. Yep. It's embarrassing. 200 to million in 10 years they're milking. And there's a glazer clause. Someone, some of you journalists, why don't you fucking PR that? Why don't you explain how they're extracting as an employee, being a co-owner, 20 million a year, highest paid earner? Where's that PR? Where's their minerals at? Because we'd all love to know how you're milking that money and no one's saying nothing because you're all bought. Can I just say as well, it's it's crazy. If you just think on, on, a, on a logical sense, right? Forget everything that's happened at Chelsea, just on a logical sense. Who does this? Who, who walks into an organisation and goes, all right, look, I'm going to be the chairman for five years and you're going to be the chairman for the next five years after that. How does that sound? Does that does that sound normal? <laughs> Can we just that's that's not normal. You were trying to appoint someone or make sure there's one person in place that's going to be the chairman that you're going to trust long term. That's going to take it. Who's because the best in the business? It's, it's the PR stunt to make but, the impression that Bowley's stepping away. That's all it is. But, he's but this not. is the thing. This was already agreed when they took over the club. This was already agreed when they bought the club that I'm going to have five years. You're going to have five years. I'm going to be chairman and you're going to be the... Who does that? But when I'm getting 20 million a year for the first five years and you're getting 20 million a year for the next five years and we can't take any dividends out of the club, that sounds like a brilliant deal. It's, 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 it's crazy. So why, why it's true? Why are more, not more people talking on that one point? Because clearly that's the only logical reason I can see as to why this is the case. It's the only reason. If anyone's got any other reason, please bring it to the table. I'd love to hear it. There ain't no reason for it. There ain't any. <laughs> no, what most clubs just have one chairman. That's it. Unless that's there's it. a massive falling out. Bruce Buck was in charge for over twenty years. Yeah, with well, Roman as, as chairman, as to, and even pre-Roman, he was already within the infrastructure. Th this is what this is what I mean. So to come and make some sort of deal like that, clearly as a financial incentive. If anyone's got any other other incentive as to why, I, I I think. Because they're taking, they're extracting money out the club, right? And they've got a glazer clause. There must be some sort of clause within that, all right? Or they found a loophole where they can't do it for more than five years as one one individual. So they've got to pass it on, and that's the only facts. Well, that, that article went on to say after the ten years are done, Bowley can get back into the hot seat if he wants. Right, so it rotates. Yeah, he can. Okay. From twenty thirty two, he can be the chairman again if he wants. It's they can't have. They can't own Chelsea. What, what is this? <laughs> but they ain't going to last. You know why? The protests, they will come. There is a protest now. Stickers, uh, Chelsea Sports Trust. No one's buying into it. There is no PR that can mask that. There's no PR that can force trust the process. Uh, we're going to get it right. And they're going to come out and speak. It's bollocks. They don't care. Yeah. They actually don't care. They're stubborn, arrogant. Moneyball merchants. But this is why I said it's going to get worse for them. Simple as that. Yeah. Address the situation or it's going to get worse for you. Yeah. 
And and on top of that now, we've got injuries. More injuries. We've got Lavia, who's played 25, 30 minutes, and he's out for the whole season. And Kunku, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Haven't seen him all season. Oh, um, by the way, he was meant to be back by now, just to clarify. Yeah, mud, yeah. The, mud the brown envelope, she is. Madam. Is, Nkunku, Nkunku is meant to be back exactly by now. We've not heard anything. It was meant to be four weeks ago. They said three to four weeks he'll be back. We are past four weeks now, just by the day. The day was yesterday, I think. He's still out. Tukumaka. Not, not Tukumaka. Well, Tukumaka's got injured again. Um, are, you, are you serious? Yeah, Tukumaka's out. Oh, yeah, Tukumaka's out. He played like 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he scored. And yeah, he, he came back from England duty early, and now he's got a problem. So I hope it's not bad, but he's got a problem. Um, Ugutuku was meant to be out for six weeks, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, 12 weeks later, where is he? Yeah. This is, this is, again, this is the lack of clarity that more people are starting to hop on and realise and going, we're not being told what's going on here. We can't just sudden, have rehabilitation. Like, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> It's, it's crazy. just a list on the website. Crazy. Rehabilitation, rehabilitation, yeah. rehabilitation. Like, oh, clearly your rehabilitation's in the mud. It's rubbish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. a load of waffle, bro. And, there's, and do you know what? Sometimes, sometimes I forget this guy's even a Chelsea player. What is going on with Wesley Fofana? Oh, bro, he's... he's... <laughs> He's well, yeah, he's out for the Somewhere in the tropical islands, bro. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> on 200 grand a week. Yo, this club, bro. So I want to ask this. I don't think Thiago Silva's playing tomorrow. I highly um, doubt it. Highly doubt it. We know why. Yeah, he won. So what the hell's left, bro? I think they're going to try and force Chalaba through. Because Chalaba did train. He's not out, out the way that, again, this is another thing. They put him on the list as undergoing rehabilitation, right? And then six hours later, they changed it to, oh no, he was in partial team training when the, the injury list came out at the time when Chalaba was on the grass training. Did, and, and, nothing and makes sense. Chalaba's been out for the majority of the season. He's just been thrown in. There's no, no build-up. Why? To up his value. Up his value, but also they ain't got anyone else to play, bro. They ain't got anyone else to turn to, realistically, in centre back. Yeah, honestly, give Cole it to Gilbert. With, uh, what webbed feet injury? You know, what Cole I'm out. Yeah, yeah, he's out. Um, set back off the set back off the set back. He's back. He's back. I he's think back. he'll play. Yeah, you got disaster, disaster. Um, listen to these names, man. So, so you're gonna get disaster with Baddy, yeah, in the centre back position. And Who almost relegated Monaco? Cucurella. Yeah, back. Yeah, the back four will be that. Cucurella guaranteed. And, and Gusto. And Gusto. Gusto. Adiachile de Sassi. 100%. Big up, big up Adam, right? He says, predicted lineup tomorrow. I think we've got more injuries now. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll quickly run through that. Let's quickly give that. Um, uh, oh, Sanchez is injured. Sanchez well. is injured. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, he's only just got. Back. He didn't even go on international break. He just Someone... broke. Someone said he's having hairline surgery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's probably got a bloom at Seagull Merchants to get it sorted, bruv. He's loaded up, up that way, bruv. He's loaded yep. on the coast. Um, well, yeah. Petrich is going to play. We've done the back line. Midfield is a given, in it? Enzo can say, though, Enzo won't, I don't think Enzo will play. Why? He came back from internationals late. Like, he, he was playing Wednesday early hours in the morning, our morning. He was playing. Yeah, but so he flew said, back. if I if I don't play them, the fans will kill me and the owners will kill the me. The owners will kill me, yeah. <laughs> so he's got to play like, their star boy. They have to he's, play he's, I think he's had one training session. I, I don't, surely not. Like, he's, he's unless we there. take the risk. Unless we take the risk. They're going to throw him right in there because who else is there? Yeah. Who else? Well, you just play Gallagher in the double pivot with, with Kaiseido, wouldn't you? Then who's going to play ahead of him? Probably Palmer. Madueke, Mudrick, True, and then Mudrick guys, yeah. Sterling's available. Those, they, they'll take up the front line with Jackson. Surely. Uh, that's that's I, 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 how I think it might end up. What a shambles. What a what fucking... Shit. What kind of team is this, bruv? Bro, even when I hear the names, it just makes me feel like flipping. Makes hell, feel how, how have we got to this? Yeah. 
Yeah. Listen so to the quality well. of these. The, 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 man, people keep telling me, give them time, Goonie. Like, they need to learn how to play together. Eventually, they'll get good. There shouldn't be no fucking eventually. That wasn't what Chelsea was signing, Mr. Eventually, you will become good. Maybe one or two, yeah, that were playing around nine other top, top, world-class level players, elite players. But we shouldn't be here. No. We shouldn't be here at all, bruv. This lineup is mad. We've got a centre back pairing that almost relegated a French club. Yeah. We've got we we've we've got a left back that was meant to go to Manchester United on the last week of the transfer window. Right? We've got a goalkeeper, fair play to him, but he's just come from the MLS. We've got Enzo Fernandez, who's absolutely stunk the place out for 105 million pounds, in my honest opinion, having one exceptional game every 10 games. Yeah, then we've got then we've got Conor Gallagher. This is the thing with Conor, right? I've always said this guy is not the level we should be building around. But I'm never gonna knock this guy for his heart and his love for the club because he always gives a hundred percent, right? He's been but our best player. This is the thing. That's the red flag. This is the red flag, bro. How is this guy the best player in our team or one of them? Because Most reliable it, as well. Him and the the Sassy, squad, they've not been injured yet. Yeah, the squad that's been orchestrated is being built by these clowns. Um, yeah. Everything is is mid as you like, but the the, the, the thing that... is, Connor Connor, in my opinion, has been more important than Cole Palmer this whole season. And I think that people take that as a wild statement, but if you look at Connor uh, Connor's performances and what he does for the team overall, we would be losing a lot more games 100%. without him. And and Cole Palmer's goals wouldn't count for nothing for those games. Because we'd be losing them because of the midfield battle. And, and it's not a discredit of Cole Palmer because he's putting out the stats, but the, sp the stats don't amount to nothing. Because we're level. Because yeah. yeah. we're mid table. Let, yeah. let me go through the rest of the team. We've got this guy that we signed from PSV, Madweke, who I, I think that was his debut season at PSV. And then we signed this guy and we bring him to Chelsea and he's still playing for the England under 21s. Yeah. We've so. got. We've got we've got Mudrick, who we've just signed from flipping Ukraine. Now I don't even know if that was a PR move because of what was going on back then, or they generally saw something in this guy. I don't know. Then we've got Nicholas Jackson. This guy was a winger at Villarreal for like five months and only became their first choice winger striker in the last two months that he was there. And he's leading the line at Chelsea Football Club. How have we got to this? And how are fans telling us? Take your time. Keep your faith with these players. No. No. I'm not having it. I'm well, absolutely not having it. I'm tired of this shit. I'll be the, real with you. The reality, the reality is this. I did say all this when we were signing these players. There was nothing to prove to me that these players were going to be anything what people think they're going to be. You know? Um, the reality of the situation is who's bought these players? And How are they still here? Right, they're, they're still here. They're the problem, all right? But nothing gets signed off without Meatloaf and Siri Merchant, irrespective of what these directors say. So you've got to take that into account, all right? But the reality is this. These players should be nowhere near Chelsea Football Club. Nowhere none near. Them. None of them. Sure. Cole Palmer, at best, at Chelsea standards, would be lucky to get on the fucking bench. No, he'd be the and, sort and, of player. I'll say this. I'll say this for yeah. these wrong ones, yeah. He ain't got nothing on Mason Mount. He hasn't got fuck all on him. He hasn't achieved what Mason Mount's achieved. He hasn't gone through what Mason Mount's achieved with Chelsea or done anything and carried our football club to the heights, not mid-table. Because the reality is Cole Palmer is has been let been let out, let away from Man City because Pep said, Well, you ain't getting in now. You're not playing even over him, Even him, I'll say this, yeah. That there was a shot in the dark because they was there's no way that they saw this guy coming into the team and performing how he yeah, is. Absolutely no. Chance. No, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. It was an opportunity no, signing. It was. And it's one of those ones that's ended up pretty um pretty nice for us, considering what Cole Palmer's done. And he's one he's one of the exceptions. You know, him, you could take Gusto out of this, and the rest have all had me mediocre seasons or or they've been crap. Um but Cole Palmer in a proper proper Chelsea team would be the sort of player especially at his age now because he's 21. He'd be the he's sort of player he'd be the sort of player you're bringing on for 15 minutes to 
develop. Learn, yeah. Learn. develop. Yeah. That's it. We're going to get Cole Palmer in three years, not not now. Like we've got players that are setting the levels. You're going to try and grow. <laughs> we had bro, we we yeah. had. Remember, we had Joe Cole, right? Who couldn't consistently see minutes at one point, and yeah. I don't care what nobody tells me. This guy was levels baller, baller, absolute baller. But he was, was not yeah. seeing the pitch because of the quality that was in front of him. Yeah. It was listen, you got to wait your turn, bruv, because we've got man like Lamps and these guys that are playing football right now. We can't justify replacing even, you. Even Gunny, even even fucking we had Duff and Robin, yeah. right? Yeah. But Robin was young. That's the young talent you buy. Eden Hazard, young. That's and you can see, talent. and you can see off the bat, these guys were going to be elite right? players. You don't need no yep. data <laughs> and all this shit. You just see with your eyes, this guy's gifted. He's got minerals. We're going to sign him, and we're going to build with him, and we're going to allow him to learn off the spine we got. We haven't got a spine. We're spineless. Facts. At Chelsea, spending yep. one billion. All right, that's the problem. All you wrongins out there that promote mediocrity, promote trust the process, you're some new age, new breed Chelsea supporter because you ain't been around clearly long enough to understand what standards are at Chelsea and what success and winnings about at Chelsea and what previous Chelsea teams we've had at Chelsea, right? Because you're only seeing it now. And that's what these clowns are sucking onto with their tentacles is they're trying to push out the old standards, the old regime, Roman DNA, Chelsea DNA, all of that out the window, the old school supporter, and go, no, we want a bit of this now, because this is easier to control. Listen to the spine that we had and what we have now. Peter Cech, John Terry, Lampard, Drogba. That's just four players that are going down the middle of that squad. Look at what we've got now. Petrovic, Disasi, Enzo Fernandez. Nicholas Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, bruv, he just sends me off, bruv. This guy will never be world class. Don't care. I've watched enough football. You see, you players, see when bruv. you you see when Ashley you play Cole, it out bruv. now. Yes, bro. Cole. Ashley Cole is a left back. Yeah, the Chill best in England the I've ever seen. Chill was probably the closest we've had to, a, to, a, to a Ashley Cole level. You know what I'm saying? And this guy's getting slandered 24-7 on these Twitter virgin football manager merchants online. You know, do you know what's funny, right? Is Kevin De Bruyne and Mo Salah couldn't even get a sniff at Chelsea. And Nothing. look at the level of quality that they are when they got to develop. They could develop at Chelsea because we were too far advanced. Was too, what, JT said that himself. Yeah, yeah, the levels were too high. Salah weren't starting ahead of Hazard. And they wanted to no go way. and play. No, nah, no chance. KDB was looking at guys like Chelsea's one matter, our one matter. When we had him, he was not starting anywhere near this guy. Sa Salah was the well, Salah was the player that you brought on, like I said, for those 15 minutes and against Arsenal to get the sixth goal, he got that sixth goal. Cherry on the cake. Yeah. That's what Salah was. Levels were too high. And fair play to them because they've gone and done their business afterwards and they've turned into the players that they've become. But at that time, that's what that's what we were that's what we were doing. That was our level. Crazy. Crazy. Now, now we got Brillo Pad sexy Cinderella at left back, fucking 70 million from Seagull Merchants. Uh the world's most expensive DM in Casado. Um uh, Enzo Fernandez He's not even a DM. Yeah. comes to Chelsea. Mudrick's had three uh what a couple seasons in ukraine or once half a season of first team football in ukrainian league or whatever it is all right as a, as a break and then we sign him <laughs> you know what i'm saying all right you got nico jackson bro this guy scores eight goals at near the end of the season everyone's going this guy's gonna be terry on me bro you know what i'm saying and then you got gusto who looks decent but he ain't nowhere near his james no way like, what are we doing here what the hell is going on? And Thiago Silva, four years old, clear than every single defender we got. Even Gusto, right? How old's Gusto? 21 he's he's, he's, 20 he's 21. Like he's he's 21. He's exactly he's on he's in that bracket. Now, to be fair to Gusto, yeah, I think we when when Gusto came in, I think well, I was anyway, of that um opinion that he's coming in as a backup to Reese James. Something happens to Reese James, you've got Gusto. And he's done that and he's fulfilled. So fair play. But he should at that age still be the sort of player that's coming on minutes, 
and you know we've got we've got the levels and he's got no pressure and he's growing but we're not doing that gusto's now the main man <laughs> and he's 21 <laughs> like all the others this is a key thing i want to say is everything that they've 20. done everything yeah. they've done it's brought down everything right it brought down everything standards ambition whatever all eliteness is gone yeah which is only beneficial for not only their pocket, but for the players that they've bought. They've almost like allowed, they've, they've set up their platform to groom, develop these players where us supporters have got nothing else but to accept it and only accept time and only accept because we have to give them time because they're all hatched out of chicken eggs, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you going to do? Oh, they're all going to turn into Mbappes and and Tony Cruz's and Modric's and you know what I'm saying, Van Basten's and Thierry Henry's and Azards and Lampards and you know it doesn't work like that. Never Project 2030, work. fuck off, mate. That's when they got to sell that. the club, mate. That's yeah. when they have to sell. Like they're going, they're leaving. They they are going to make the money, double their money, and leave. They're not here for the long haul. These guys are opportunists. They're not here for long. There's no. There's not going to be enough success to kick to to warrant them staying. Like for the supports to allow them to stay as well. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I think we got them where we want them, bruv. We got them where we want them. We can absolutely get them out. I 119 percent believe in that. Congratulations on the 10k, by the way. You've made it. Hey, congrats. Have we done it. Yeah, you made it. Damn. Big up to all the ultras, bruv. Respect to all the minerals FC ultras, man. We're hit 10k, bruv. Who would have thought, man? Self-made minerals, bruv. I don't delve in circles. I don't do all that nonsense. I don't need no handouts, bruv. I go there, we land it. We have everyone coming against us and we land it. 10k, bruv. That's monumental, man. That's legendary shit. Come on. Let's go. All Respect done. to everyone. Congrats. And on that, on that, we shout out our GOAT. Chelsea old boys, we see things they'll never see. You know what I'm saying? Smash those likes, subscribe up the Chels. RIP legend. Yeah? Let's have it right. 10k, bruv. I can't believe it. Honestly. No, you deserve it, man. I, I can't believe Absolutely, it, bruv. man. Just the beginning. It's mad. Who would have thought? This is the part, this is the part where you get your medal out, you throw it into the crowd, and you start looking to 20. Yeah, we look yeah. to 20. We <laughs> would hope. We go wherever the ultras take us, bruv. You know what? <laughs> Great shout. Get let's that room salute, and charge let's, in. let's salute the goat, bruv. Yeah. Let's go. 10k. Let's have it right. Up the Chelsea up the Mills FC and up the Don Roman. Roman Come on, man. It's monumental, bruv. Let me quickly run through these guys. Big up the Adam rated. Um, become a I've just influencer. realized really quick. Sorry, I've just yeah. I don't know why it's taken me this long to clock. Um, cool. Roman and Jose have the same song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jose, come on. Mad. I want the Jose goat back, bruv, but he won't come back. Um, CFC Daniel says FFP punishment, um, equals sanction, uh, plus full sale of the club. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's not wrong, is he? Um, big guy Anthony Bernie says, Get him, Johnny. Facts Simon Jordan is a wind up merchant to cause controversy. That's it. He has no credibility. Johnny Eunice and Gooney are the only Chelsea fans I rate on YouTube. Respect to you. And we're saying it as it is, bruv. Uh, big guy Adam Ray says, I don't want Ozzyman because when uh, AFCON comes, he will disappear with Jackson. We will be missing the strikers for a whole month. I think Vahilovic is a better option. And I don't think we're getting Ozzyman anyway. Yes, we're not getting him. We're not getting him. We're not getting him. He's falling through. Apparently, Musiala is going to go City as well. Um, no, I heard um, the, the Bayern, the Bayern um, director or chairman, I forgot who it was, Ebo, said that we want to build around Musiala. He was going to be the next phase not, of Bayern. He's not going anywhere. Okay. It depends, it depends yeah. who they get as a gaffer because they're sacking Tommy T. True. Right. If, um, if they, they get Nagels, if they get Nagelsmann back, you can forget it. He's staying at uh, Bayern. Yeah, yeah I agree. 
I don't think he will. He won't go back. Well, um, he he said that he wants to decide his future. Um, I think it was before or after the Euros, something like that. So there's some quote. I you heard. know, we're getting the herpes. You do know that, don't you? I'm just hoping. I'm that, hoping Liverpool. I'm hoping Liverpool get him. I'm if that, that yeah, we, we might just keep Poch at this rate. If Alonso's not moving anywhere, and Liverpool are interested in the Zerbi or Bayern Munich are interested in the Zerbi, we might not even end up with him. But God knows. Uh, li listen. Um, we need we need to uh, we need to push hard before this decision gets made because if that decision gets made before we take action, we're yeah, finished. Correct. Well, they well these directors shouldn't be allowed to even make the decision on who's going to be next manager. They need to go. Yeah, they need to go, bruv. When Stanley's a wrong end, bruv, he's a carroty merchant, bruv. Yeah, get him out. And Stuart Little, Stuart Little's trying to give it Emma Hayes, bruv. Yeah, during the game. All right, and she said, "Fuck off, will ya?" You what? What's, what did he do? So he was he was going up to her, trying to speak to her at, at a game. Or was it half time? Yeah, and she uh, no, it was during the game, I think. And then she no goes, way. "Fuck off, will ya?" Yeah, she's gaffer, mate. You proper chills, all right. So if he's doing it, the little Stuart Little, then what do you think Carrot and Winstanley's doing? And she told him to fuck off and all. So have it right. So, yeah, there's some issues there. I'm sure JT can vouch it. I know Steve G can vouch it. Big up to Steve G, yeah. Let's have it right. Uh, proper chills. Um, Jamie says, Simon Jordan must be a conductor for the of the Brown Envelope PR train. He has been moonwalking for these owners from day one, supporting Gary Lewis. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, everyone's twerking for cement booted rat, yeah, with that assist he got for Belgium against England. I go, this guy's got touch of Gary Glitter, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's got touch of Jimmy Savile, bro, when he comes to Premier League. We don't need this guy, yeah, at Chelsea. We don't need this guy anywhere near us. He's a rat, all right? He needs to stay well clear. He's right? a good assist, but I sell him. Get rid of him. He's, he's yeah. time at Chelsea. He's, he's yeah, yeah. Time. That's just up to his value, bro. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, look, <laughs> look at he Look at he's. Me, like Bowley, I would do anything for pound notes. Uh, here is some pure profit money up the channels, up the minerals, <laughs> protest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's have it right, yeah. Meatloaf Bowley, bruv. Come on, don't ever forget it, guys, yeah. You know it's the meatloaf, yeah. Let's have it right. Let's have it right, yeah. Except one of them's got a multiple number one hits, bruv. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fucking wrongings, bruv. Let's have it right. Um, but yeah, guys, prediction on the game? We'll win, surely. Well, mm -hmm. I reckon we'll win this. We right, even, even Burnley. Yeah, it's Burnley, man. It's Burnley at home. It's an AI <laughs> it's just... derby, bruv. It's the AI derby. It is the AI derby, yeah. The AI yeah. scout derby. Uh, I'm surprised they're not sponsoring this game. They don't have to. They technically are, actually. They're using them um, for both clubs. So, yeah. I think in our worst form, we should beat them. Even if it's tight, but we'll beat them. I reckon it'll be a... Uh, I want to say... Either 2-0 or 3-1. Two-goal gap. I, I will say this. Well, go on, Gunny, you give your, your prediction first. I'm, I'm going to go 3 1, and then you're going to hear people say, Oh, look, we've just beaten 3 1. Yeah, trust the process. They're going to get good. We're going to have a top four finish next season. Yeah, back in the Champions League. We're going to have a, a domestic cup run as well. Probably win one of those. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, and then Thursday happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, I can see it. Minnows Matt's gonna fucking score against us at the bridge, oh man. mate no that can't happen I'm sorry that can't happen it can't happen it can't happen if if Mount's first goal back first goal period yeah. he's not scored for United is he he's not even as uh, is, he, is he scored is he assisted he's assisted I think he's assisted yeah he's assisted not in the league I think he had a cut or it's anyway cut, he's cut not scored head, yeah. if he's... he scores against us at the Brit no, I'm sorry man. What all the yeah, haters exactly. gonna say, bruv? I mean, for me personally, I'm proved right either way. But I mean, look, um, in terms of Burnley, um, I think it's, if we don't score first, then we're in for a, we're in for a slippery one. Personally, but they do like to Burnley, come out now. Burnley will be well set up with a game plan, 
They play all right. I'm not saying obviously they haven't got that true for Fana, bruv, but they've they've still got their their core there. They didn't have that true Fana all season, only from the loan. So I think they're not ones to just think I oh, will steamroll them. We should be. I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? We should be absolutely battering Burnley, but the reality is the way we are and with the pressure, and let's have it right, it's the first game they're going to play with everything that's going on, with the Chelsea Supports Trust, the stickers, uh, the protests with Strasbourg. There's a lot going along. And these young players have never experienced this before. And yeah. they do talk about the chance, Roman chance. They do discuss it, guys. They talk about this stuff. Mudueke's come out, Chikameka, we need the supply, the, the supporters, the yeah. supporters and the fans to stick with us. Listen, you deliver, earn your stripes, you know. And 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 we, we support you anyway. But the reality is none of you are delivering because the league table don't lie. Our cup performances ain't lying where we lost the Caribou Cup final. So like I don't want to hear that nonsense, you know. They're 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 feeling the pressure, you know. And I do feel sorry for these kids because in the day they're not gonna yeah. turn down this golden opportunity that's a fact yeah and, a fact. And yep. the reality is you know this is not their fault you know they're not actually that level yet so nope. it's like i'm putting i don't blame players no i'm blaming really? the owners and the directors and everything that they're doing at a football club because the reality is we wouldn't have this bunch of players if they were doing things correctly Right, so I want people to understand that. Don't come at the players. We know that a lot of them are just not that level, never going to hit that level. That's the reality situation. But coming at them, it's like, well, you know, and what? And it goes for Pochettino as well. Um, the other thing I want to say with Burnley is, um, I think, I think we it could be a draw. I think it could be a draw. That's that's a, that's a horrible if, result. If we draw that game, it, Sam, it, are we playing at the bridge or are we playing at <laughs> the bridge? bridge, 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 bridge. If, if we draw that game, it needs to go off in there, man. That is unacceptable. Yeah. Anything less than three points is completely unacceptable. Absolutely right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's disgraceful. Yeah. Uh, but have you seen our last results against Burnley? Our last uh, home games against Burnley have been a little bit... I swear we lost 1-0 one, one from right. I think um, have they that was under Tommy T. Did they beat us? I thought they um, no, I might thought have been one one. Like... Might have been one one. Yeah, I don't think they've beaten us at the bridge in like donkey's years. Yeah, I think which it's is draw. probably not going to help. <laughs> yeah, but, no. Yeah, they're not. They're not an easy side, and they'll see the vulnerability at Chelsea and we've got injuries. Let's not forget They're that. fighting relegation as well. Can't underestimate those sort of teams. Yeah. Got to take them yeah. Serious. But this is where I think, yeah, we get that first goal. I think it's a wrap. If we don't, it starts to get really weird. So, yeah. Um, big up Rebel Rise. He says, the only elite gaffer left to a point in the summer for Liverpool is Tuchel. I don't hope that this happens. Up the Chelsea, up the Mills FC. Long live Chelsea, old boys. Congrats to the 10K. Big up to you, my geezer. Respect to everyone supporting the channel. Please do subscribe, guys, and like, and, and the same to Eunice's channel and Man Knows Football, Goonies channel. Um, I think Tuchel is, if he's going to go anywhere, <coughs> I think he's going United. I don't. I think United owners have already sort of, they want to make their mark and bring their own guy in. And They're looking at Southgate as well. <laughs> nah, that's not going to happen, bruv. Oh, happen. Yeah, surely not. Nah. Surely I think Potter not. could be. Potter could be. But people will mock that and laugh. But this is where there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Potter will be allowed to do his job. He will have a structure and he mm -hmm. has a brand of football. And I'll give him that. He hasn't won nothing, but he has got potential. As and a coach, Chelsea, he wasn't allowed to do his job. He's had an NDA and he's a jellyfish. Yes, man. That's the thing as well. That's the, no, honestly, that, with Potter, that's the one thing that lets him down severely is just his personality and just, um, he's too lenient or too low, low vibration. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to put it that, um, and everything else, he's, he's, he's a, he's a good coach, you know, um, but he's just, if his personality matched it, he might get somewhere at the yeah. top level anyway. If not, he would just belong at a club like Brighton or a club that just develops. That's fair <laughs> enough. 
And Alonso's announced that he's staying at Leverkusen as well. Yeah. So all this Alonso is the herpes bruv all day long, the fraudulent Wolverine Wolverine. Um and yeah, you're not wrong. It might be a video. Chelsea beat the mighty Burnley, bruv. You know, that's what I, that's what it's always been the case. We beat the mighty Middlesbrough, we beat the mighty Blackburns and all these you know. Uh big up James says I called Dr. Timberlands. I called him Dr. Timberlands because he had uh has a PhD on how to play football without moving. And <laughs> he gives lectures in the dressing room on how to do the same, which is why we play stuck in the mud with him. <laughs> that's cement booted rat. <laughs> He's not wrong, bruv. He's not wrong. You know, get him out, bruv. Everyone remembers him like that, don't they? Like, yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's everyone was sponsoring this fraud, bruv. Yeah. During that season, right to the very end. You know what I'm saying? A disgrace. I never chanted his name. I remember the last time I chanted his name was Villa Villa Park away. And he came on and we won the game. I think it was 3 1 we won. All right. Um and he, he came on and he made a difference and we, we won the game. And that was the only time I was on my seat chanting his name, bruv. Yeah. Ever since that thing came out, that interview, never chant his name, bruv. Never, no, bruv. No. Never. That was the end of it. That was the end of it. Yeah, it finished, bruv. But there was people that were. It's disgraceful, man. Um, but guys, uh, big up to um, you guys. Anything coming up, guys, for you lot that you want to tell everyone or what you've done? Oh, preview for the game tomorrow will be out later um, or shortly. And um, apart from that, we'll go through the game tomorrow and see what happens. <laughs> That's it. And then we'll take it from there. So, um, yeah, you just talk football. I'll be doing I'll be doing a preview and post-match on my channel as well, Man Knows Football. Make sure you check that out. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's really it, man. Just get Clown Lake out, bro. And Southgate. Also, I want to shout out, yeah, Southgate, yeah, Southgate. He's got a waistcoat merch. has got to go. One of the worst so gaffers I've ever seen, bro. Oh, okay. this guy. Yeah, how he's, he's a yes man. He's a yes man for the FA. Yeah, there's, there's a the thing going on here. Can... There's a trend. There's a trend. There's a trend. Uh, maybe that maybe Clown Lake getting advised by the FA, bro. Who knows? Um, but I want to shout out Eunice because he, he went on a platform recently, and people were trying to discredit. Um, the stickers and uh, everything going on around the club and Eunice landed down mineral. So respect to Eunice, bro. Yeah, for landing it. You know no what I'm saying? And fighting the fighting the good cause. It's very important um, because we don't take it lightly. Um, but respect to everyone in here. Um, love to everyone. I've got one more Super Minerals to land here from Jamie. He says he has a sponsor to make new Timberlands. Well, what are they going to have? Cement as, as souls or what? <laughs> <laughs> cemented souls, bruv. Extra durable. Um, who knows? But listen, respect to everyone. Um, thank you so much to everyone who supports the channel on the uh on the 10 the 10k subscribers is, is monumental. The, the the narrative stands. We want to work with the French Strasbourg Ultras and get these clown lakes out and get Blue Co out. We will continue. To prop what needs to be propped, the clowns of your football, Clown Lake. Get them out. I will salute my Chelsea old boys for uh, this time again for a monumental stream. And um, as always, guys, respect to everyone, um, love to everyone. And we're going to end on, on this note because I, I just feel like celebrating. Do you know what I'm saying? But love to everyone. Uh, please put your comments down below. It's very important. And like the stream and keep subscribing, guys. And on to 20K now. Let's go. Greetings from Centre Parks, by the way. That's, uh, that's the background. I hope you're all well. This is just ridiculous, though, isn't it? Oh, are you fucking having me on? Are you joking me right now? That's how deep that... This is how far they reach. Let me smoke that for you, Siri Merchant, yeah? Let me smoke that for you, Ted Lasso Bowley, yeah? You think you can fool us? You're a long way from Starbucks, mate. Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Let's have it right.